Hello guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at uh, the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of two pitted wear culture individuals from Sweden, the last hunter-gatherers of Sweden who for a certain period of time coexisted with the farmers and the Indo-Europeans. Let's begin with the appearance of VBJ13. Uh, this is a man who has blue color eyes, snub-shaped nose and blonde hair. Uh, you will notice uh, if you look at the, my other videos on pitted wear culture, a lot of them have blue eyes and blonde hair. Uh, most of them are blonde and blue eyed. And he's got wavy hair texture and he's got uh, Estonian eye shape. So I depicted him like a typical white guy with blue eyes, blonde hair, wavy hair and uh, European facial traits. He has blue eye haplotype 1 and blue eye haplotype 2 and blue eye haplotype 3. He has the whole package. Um, definitely very light uh, color eyes and hair, uh, doesn't have BH4, but if you have BH2, you're not going to have BH4. And he does have two derived variants in IRF4's mutation that has to do with hunter-gatherer, blue eyes, pale skin and red hair. Uh, most European hunter-gatherers have either two or one derived alleles here, whereas for modern Europeans, Modern Europeans don't really have any derived alleles in IRF4. It's pretty rare uh, to see that. And it is most common in Ireland and uh, basically Northwestern Europe. Uh, for when it comes to his genotype in Tirp 1, he's got definitely lighter hair and eyes because all derived variants there. But he does have some darker non European uh, and maybe not even not Eurasian genotypes so if you look at the other genes like SLC uh, 45A2 or SLC 24A4 and A5. Uh, he's got some kind of a darker pigmentation uh, genotypes as well. Now here's VBJ18. This guy is a little bit lighter, uh, but he's got red hair, Greek shaped nose and green eyes. And the reason I'm saying he's lighter is because look at his genotype in SLC24, A5, ASIP, KTLG, uh, SLC45A2. He's basically a typical modern Northern European when it comes to these uh, variations. And he also has below a hepatop 1 and 2 and 3. He's got the whole package once again, uh, just like a lot of these um, pitted wear culture individuals. And he's got green eyes. Uh, but the, the likelihood of blue eyes is also pretty high. It's like 31.9 versus 38.4%. So he's got green or blue or maybe greenish eyes, maybe bluish green or greenish blue. Uh, and he's got curly hair. And um, for the eye shape, the eye shape predict predictor is predicting him to have Estonian eye shape once again. So this is a um, European looking guy in terms of features, European facial features, curly uh, red or ginger hair and bluish green eyes is kind of what he looked like. Now let's talk a little bit about VBJ13's GD match results. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K13. Uh, as you can see, this is a very northern result. Some of the other uh, pitted wear culture individuals score 8 to 7% West Mediterranean. He's only scoring 3. Um, <coughs> with MDLPK11, quite little Neolithic as well. 17% Neolithic is much less than some of these other pit wear culture individual samples. And I think the other individuals is also pretty Northern. Uh, this is what VBJ13 is scoring with Pandiana LK12. He is scoring 22% Anatole Neolithic here, but... Um, you know, once again, this is kind of low compared to what's typical for pitted wear culture individuals with this calculator. This is what VBG13 is scoring with Ancient Eurasia K6. And this individual is scoring here. Something is atypical about this results. It's the high ancestral of Eurasian that he's scoring. The ancestral of Eurasian is kind of unusual. And uh, with the Oracle, he's getting modeled as a mixture of Matala plus Turkish or Scandinavian hunter-gatherer plus Lebanese or Jordanian, basically a mixture of three quarters Scandinavian hunter-gatherer plus one quarter uh, modern people from the Levant or Middle East. Now here's VBJ018. Uh, this guy has just slightly higher amount of uh, Neolithic farmer admixture, like 1% higher, but it does make a little bit of a difference. Um, with Eurogenes K13, you can see he's scoring 4.3% West Mediterranean. So there is a little bit more West Mediterranean affinities with Eurogenes K13. The previous individual, if you remember, was scoring 3%. Uh, this is what VBJ18 is scoring with Pandiana LK12. Uh, once again, a little bit higher Anatolian Neolithic farmer than the previous individual, but still kind of low for pitted wear culture standards. Uh, this is what VBJ18 is scoring with Ancient Eurasia K6. And... Here you can see once again a little bit higher Natufian uh, component than the previous individual. And with the Oracle actually getting modeled as a mixture of Euro Northern Europeans plus European hunter-gatherers. So this individual is more European hunter-gatherer uh, than what's typical for modern Northern Europeans by, by a big, uh, by a long shot. Like it's like half 
or Northern European plus half hunter gatherer, or even two thirds hunter gatherer plus one third Northern European. This individual is very hunter gatherer, and um, all of these Peter Duer culture individuals are very hunter gatherer in terms of ancestry. They're West Eurasian, as you can see with the or with the uh, Gidrosia K3 oracle, but uh, these individuals are not where West Eurasian drift peaks. West Eurasian drift actually peaks in European farmers, and European Neolithic farmers are without doubt the widest people in terms of ancestry in the world. Now we'll be taking a look at their traits and examining their genome using my genome analyzer which is on my website. So let's uh, let's begin with um, 18 PVC 018 and uh, PVC 018 has got AA in Komsval maturation which means mat mat genotype. Very interesting thing. Uh, this is the warrior genotype, which means more dopamine in the system. Pretty interesting stuff. So um, lower COMT activity. So COMT is the enzyme that breaks down dopamine. And if you have lower COMT activity, that means you have less breakdown of dopamine, therefore higher dopamine. And the warrior genotype, advantages in attention tasks and motivation. Very stereotypically European genotype to have. Um, what about preference improvement not, not genotyped uh, here? in DRD2, which is in implicated in a slightly increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and a slightly increased likelihood of schizophrenia. Uh, TAC1, not genotyped. Okay, uh, we're, we can skip all this. What about 5-HTCLPR? TT here, which means short form 5-HTCLPR, just like most of you guys watching my video. Um, some people, some of us, it's more common in Europeans to have uh, the long form genotype for long form 5-HTCLPR. For example, myself, I have long form 5-HTCLPR which sort of protects me from depression. But for most people, most people have short form and therefore uh, slightly higher odds of depression. So this individual does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation and heterozygous for both of the variations in OXTR that have to do with empathy. So kind of intermediate levels of empathy. Um, for diabetes CC here, which leads to a sevenfold decrease in the risk of type one diabetes. Uh, we don't really care about type two diabetes because that's preventable and chances are uh, with the kind of diet that these people were living on they would not develop type 2 diabetes type 2 diabetes takes a di to develop that you have to have a diet that's very heavy in sugar like sodas and various um yes yeah, mostly sodas soda is kind of the devil when it comes to type 2 diabetes uh, for hemochromatosis not a carrier for alzheimer's no risk alleles no risk alleles for apoe2 uh, the main variations that are important for alzheimer's are these two that have to do with apoe2 uh, apoe gene and everything else just kind of slightly contributes but it doesn't matter all that much so we can ignore that for miscellaneous section no micro p uh, i'm not going to pronounce this in full but you can read what it says on the screen and um maybe pause the video if you can't see um change the quality of the video. Sometimes YouTube has like a lower quality video where you can't, you can't read what's on the screen. So you, you might need to set it to a little bit higher standard so that you could see what it says. But um, no micro P, smaller cr cranium and lower IQ. Hi then there's another variation for a genotype for higher IQ. Interesting. Uh, TT here, which means impaired muscle performance and likely endurance athlete rather than strength or, or, or power athlete. Uh, for drug response, I uh, don't really care about that. For Albinism and atypical traits, not a carrier for any of the albinism mutations and not a carrier for Melanesian blonde hair variants. Okay, nice to know. Now we can check, this was 18, right? Yeah, this was 18. Now we can check 13. Um, yeah, there he is. Yep, that's 13. I just want to verify, make sure that I'm you know, doing everything right. So 13 has got GG in Comte's Valmet variation, which means Valval -val genotype. This is the opposite. This is the warrior genotype, which means more Comte activity and uh, basically less dopamine, less, less dopamine buildup. Uh, TT here in MAOA, which means lower activity of the MAOA enzyme. So this is the opposite. So here, he's got higher activity of Comte enzyme, but lower activity of MAOA enzyme. What that means is that both of these enzymes are enzymes that break down dopamine. So in Comte, He's a warrior, but in, in MAOA, he's a warrior. So these kind of cancel out. Um, GG here, which means no derived, no golden variance in DRD2, sporofrenance in pro, which means higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and higher likelihood of schizophrenia. Okay, 
Talk one. Oh, this is this is crazy. This is cool. Okay, so he's got AA in Talk one of variation of ZRD2, which means A1 A1 genotype, and this is implicated in a greatly decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and an increased likelihood of alcoholism, Parkinson's, and ADHD, and various other uh, illnesses. And this is not a typical human genotype. Um, this is a genotype you will see in every gorilla, monkey, ape, um, chimpanzee, whatever. Any kind of non-human. That's a, that's a monkey. Is gonna have AA here. Uh, Neanderthals mostly also have AA, but humans tend to have GG here, which means A to A to genotype basically. Um, and the A allele uh, is pretty dangerous. It decreases the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain by I think I think it's like 40 percent. So it's it's a pretty dangerous genotype to have, uh, and it greatly increases the likelihood of certain illnesses such as like stuff that that's mentioned here. Uh, so it's a very interesting genotype. It's heterozygous for AA, meaning A1A1 genotype. Uh, pretty crazy stuff. We can skip everything else. What about this? TT here, which means typical genotype for most humans. Once again, short form. Okay, wow, and this is this is crazy right here. So this individual has CC in this variation, which leads to long form 5-HTTLPR and significantly reduced risk of depression. This is a very rare genotype. So this individual actually does have long form 5-HTTLPR. I was just talking about that, like... Two minutes ago, I, I hope you were paying attention. So this individual has significantly reduced risk of depression and better serotonin transportation um, based on his genotype in 5-HTTOPR. So for lactose persistence, not a carrier for European lactose persistence. For empathy, increased empathy, lower empathy, intermediate. So I, for empathy, I guess it's just kind of intermediate or average um, intermediate levels of empathy. For diabetes... CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. And type 1 diabetes is the one we really care about. Uh, type 2 diabetes, once again, is kind of irrelevant when we're talking about a copper age individual. For hemochromatosis, does not carry any of the hemochromatosis variants. For Alzheimer's, okay, he's got this two risk alleles for Alzheimer's in this APOE variation. This is important. So this individual having CC here means he's, he's 12 to 61 times higher odds of Alzheimer's than average. And when you consider the fact that like 10% of people develop Alzheimer's when they're 60, um, this basically means this individual, like the likelihood of this individual developing Alzheimer's is incredibly, incredibly high. For myopia, oh, we don't care about that. For miscellaneous section, no micro P. Once again, you can read this and you can... Uh, you can uh, ruminate about it for a little bit. I'm not going to pronounce it because monetization does not have micro P once again. Um, genotype for smaller cranium and lower IQ. Another genotype for lower IQ. Then another genotype for eight points lower IQ than individuals with GG. Okay. However, better performing muscles and likely sprinter. Okay. We don't care about drug response. It doesn't matter all that much. For albinism and a typical traits panel, not a carrier of this. Not a carrier of this. Not a carrier of this. Not a carrier. Not a carrier of anything, but he's got CC here, which leads to a decreased risk of cleft lip and palate, uh, which is, I think, the typical genotype for most humans. So this individual does not have cleft lip or palate or albinism, uh, but it is very possible and probable that he had uh, Alzheimer's at some point. He developed Alzheimer's when he was old. Uh, if he did grow old, because I don't know how long, how um, what the life expectancy was like in the Copper Age for uh, Swedish hunter-gatherers. Well, thanks for watching my video until the end. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. You can download both of these samples in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. And um, that's pretty much all I had to say. Goodbye, guys.